All right, so we're here to talk about uh, three reasons why your AMBA probably fails, okay? And uh, we're gonna go through them in hierarchy of, uh, I would say what's most important from beginner level and walk a little bit up in advanced controls, okay? So the first one is that you're not, you don't have your hips connected to the shoulder, okay? If there's space between my hips and Natalia's shoulder here, she can just slip her elbow out. I don't really have any real control. So the way we control her shoulder here is you can attach yourself to the arm, but it's about your legs here and your hips. I want to do what's called a back heel, where I pull my heels to my butt. And I also want to bring my butt closer to my heels. So when she tries to move away from me, I should be well attached, okay? Um, this is probably the reason why um, a lot of beginners, they uh, develop a poor escape where they simply just bridge and they pull their elbow to the mat. Yeah, here. The reason why this works is because uh, the person on top has poor controlling mechanics. If I pull my heels to my butt here, my butt to my heels and hold this pinch, if she tries to pull her elbow to the mat, she runs right into my hips. And in a live situation where she tries that, she tries to bridge and pull that arm in, she actually helps extend her own arm. So if you think you're doing this escape and you think it's good, um, you're creating a bad habit for yourself where you will actually help your partner break your arm. So don't do it. You shouldn't be able to just pull your elbow up unless it's a really loose position. And then it doesn't mean you're good. It means the person who's executing the move is bad, okay? Um, so everything is pulling in here. My hip, my butt to my heels and my heels to my butt. And I'm holding this back heel pinch. But I'm Natalia, she moves away here. It looks something like this. My heels come in here. You can see in my calves this tension here. And now my butt comes to my heels and I hold this. It's an isometric hold. I keep this pinch here. Super important for the arm bar. Especially when you're working on bottom. This is where you can see it uh, the most clear. So, what? Come back in. So, if she's on her knees here, let's say I'm going for an arm bar from close guard. If, you, if I'm not back healing here, if she postures up, look at all this space between her hips and my shoulder here. Her shoulder and my hips here. She can easily yank the arm out. Yeah. But if I do a good job of staying tight here, when she tries to pull out, it's very high. Okay? And that leads me to my second point, uh, which is especially relevant from bottom. And that is proper control of the head. Okay? So the way we control our partner's head in the armbar is um, is through a cross face leg. So we have two legs when we're working from here. We have the torso leg that goes across her torso, pulls in, and then we have a cross face leg that goes across her head. Okay, now let's move a little. I want to basically try to pinch her ear to her shoulder here. So the way I do that is I pull my, I use that back heel to pull this in. When she tries to move her head, it's very difficult, okay? If she's coming up and trying to get up, so try to sit up, I actually use another action. I open my knee, so I point my knee out to bring her head down. And this looks like ridiculous, like some Aikido stuff, but it's actually that easy, okay? So I can be here, maybe I'm controlling the leg. As she tries to come up, I can back heel all I want, but she can still come up. But the moment I open my knee, I can push your head down, okay? So it's a combination of back healing and forcing her ear to her shoulder. And when she comes up, it's about opening the knee to bring her head back while still keeping that good back heel. Um, let's look at this from bottom, from the close guard position here. Yeah, um, so first this angle, so you see her head is close to her shoulder here. When she tries to pull out, if she can't move that head that well, her arm can't go out. If I'm controlling here, 
She can move her head and she can pull out that arm. Okay, let's see it from uh, another angle from the front. Yes, here. So look at her head here. A good detail here from bottom is I want my knee basically higher than her ear here. So when I shoot this up, I want my knee to be higher than her ear. This combined with a good back heel makes her head stuck. So when she tries to pull the arm out, it's stuck. Okay. If my knee is below her ear and she, she can pull that out way easier. Okay. So control the shoulder, bring your hips to the shoulder, use the back heel. Control the head using the back heel and using the opening of the knee to force your partner down. Now the third one is about a breaking grips. And here we're gonna focus on when you're controlling the arm here with your arms, you wanna be elbow to elbow here. So my I shoot I wanna bring my elbow all the way in. So the inside of my elbow touches the inside of her elbow. This way I'm really connected tightly here. Now when it's time to break grips, I wanna bring my elbow to her wrist, okay? So I wanna maneuver my arm in such a way that I can bring my elbow to her wrist. So even when she locks up here, I can start to extend with my whole body. And I'm not gonna look to extend straight back, I'm gonna look to extend diagonally here. So look, as I extend, I can make her arm go straight. And once it's straight, I can switch to two on ones. If I just go here and pull at the elbow, I'm never gonna break the grip. I'm just gonna tire out my arms. I'm gonna look to get in deep, elbow deep on the wrist, make sure that her hand is as close to my chest as possible. And I'm gonna look to lean away to put pressure on the shoulder and break the grip. And once the arm is fully extended, I can switch. If you try to go two on one here and pull, it's very hard. You wanna attach your whole body to it. You can go really in choker if you want, there's different ways to do this. But when I attach my whole body to a wrist, I extend with my back and I straighten arm her out, out her arm with my entire body. And then when it's straight, I can go two on one here. Um, if Natalia does it to me, you can see the difference here, especially to avoid people curling out of the armrests. So let's say Natalia has my arm here. She's, she's going in for a grip break. Right? If she's, maybe my arm was already unlocked and she's just grabbing a two in one here. Right? Even though she's pretty strong, when she tries to lean back here, I can curl my arm in here and lock my hands. Right? My arm can be almost extended but if I have a good bicep curl, I can, I can bend my arm again. Now, if she locks elbow to wrist here, keeps everything tight and extends with her back, when I try to curl, it's damn hot. And now when it's extended, she can go two on one. Because now when I try to curl, I'm trying to curl from a full extension, which is pretty damn difficult, okay? So this is especially important for smaller grapplers. Bigger grapplers should do this as well because it's just better. But you want to be elbow to wrist until the arm is fully extended. Then you can switch to a two and one for better control. Okay, now it's hard for me to curl this arm here. Okay, but over here, but it's uh, just the two and one here. Here, I can easily do this. Okay, so that was the last one. Um, let me know if these tips help. Um, if you saw them before somewhere, um, and uh, let me know if you have any other armbar problems or something similar in the comments, uh, I'll gladly help you. And um, I would love to do more in this series on submission controls and what goes wrong. Uh, so hopefully that will save you some years of training and get you better quicker. Thank you.